Hey guys, I hope you're all keeping well. So we are off to another new week and we have had all of the royals, including the ex-royals, have popped up for various reasons over the weekend. Namely and firstly, we had the very important Veterans Day, Armistice Day, and then of course in the UK, we had Remembrance Sunday. Now I've had quite a few of you ask the question, why is it that we have Remembrance Sunday instead of Armistice Day or Veterans Day? Well, we do still honour the fallen on Armistice to stay. We had lots of events all around the UK. We always do the two minute silence as well. But Remembrance Sunday is in addition and it is something that we do in the UK for the following reasons. Now, Armistice Day and Veterans Day is commemorated every year on the 11th of November to mark the armistice when it was signed between the Allies of World War I and Germany. So this was obviously taken place on the 11th of November. They often say the 11th hour, the 11th minute, but my dad explained to me years ago that they were still shelling each other well into the, the day in the evening until it was actually basically drawn to an official close. But the reason why we have Remembrance Sunday is because after the end of World War II, the UK government wanted to honour participants of both the world wars. So we replaced Armistice Day or Veterans Day with the new Sunday Observance, which was later then changed and called Remembrance Sunday. Since 1956, this is always held on the second Sunday in November. So there you go. Now, another question that has come up quite a few times for those of you that may not have missed my explanation on this before is a few of you are asking, why is Queen Camilla known as Queen Camilla, but Prince Philip was never king? You can only be born a king. Think of it literally like a deck of cards. The king is higher than the queen. So whereas Queen Elizabeth, she was born queen, she cannot make her husband, then obviously Philip, a king because that would have made him in higher rank than what she is. It would never be allowed. So this is why kings can make queens, but a queen can never make a king. Now, speaking of the king and queen and all of the royals for that, plus our very own favourite, Scottish hottie. Yes, I am talking about the formerly known Major Johnny. Yes, move over, Jamie Fraser. We have got a new man in a kilt that the royal fans are totally falling over themselves for. We have seen him at lots of events. He's very happily married, and I'm sure and I hope that his wife actually laughs at this new status that he has found himself placed in. But Major Johnny is no more. He has now been given the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. This is so that he is given a more, um, a higher pay grade and more of a prestigious role because he is now very much the King's equerry. And we expect to see lots more of the Scottish hottie in his kilt. So at the fantastic get together, which is the Festival of Remembrance, we had all of the royals there. We obviously had the King and Queen, we had the Prince and Princess of Wales, but we also had Princess Anne with her husband, Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence. We had the Duke of Kent and his sister, Princess Alexandra, and we also had the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester. It's really nice to see all the different family members come out at events like this. And they always do such an amazing job of the music. They had a performance by one of my favourites, Luke Evans. He's done a lot of Disney films. He has got an amazing voice, um, especially on stage. He's very much, I'd say, like Hugh Jackman for me. I wouldn't want him singing out a pop song or anything, but on stage, he's phenomenal and he can really belt out a tune. But we had performances as well from the Royal Marines, the Royal Air Force, the Squadronaires and the Bark Choir. And basically it was just one big epic display of fantastic music, fantastic songs and singers. And there was obviously a massive tribute to our dearly departed Queen. But it is nice to see them at these big events together, obviously the last time we saw them all together was a very sad moment in history but the time before that we had the Queen's Jubilee and I am still so grateful that we actually got to have Her Majesty here for that wonderful and momentous occasion and I have to say the Brits do pomp and they do ceremony like no other. No disrespect to any other country but I am always so amazed at the show that our military and ex-service men and women put on and obviously we had the march past the Cenotaph on Sunday, we had the 
lane of the wreaths, we had some amazing, beautiful moments of emotion, not just from the Princess of Wales and Queen Camilla and all of the other members of the royal family, but also from all of those people that were there marching. I get very emotional at these events and I often don't watch all of them. I saw some idiots, you know, obviously idiots are everywhere, but I saw people saying, like, how can you get upset? You know, you weren't there. And you're like, I, I, I read history. I honestly can't understand how people can't get emotional seeing all of those faces, all of those, those people. You can still see the stories and pain etched across their faces. So many people went to war and still do and they don't come home. The number of people that we lost in world wars and wars that have gone on since. And I just, I find it amazing that people are like, well, I don't care. I wasn't there. And it's just truly unbelievable. And when you see the emotion in all of these men and women's faces, especially when you get to the older veterans, the remaining few that are still alive that fought in World War II as they go past the cenotaph. And obviously with the Queen now missing, it brought a tear to my eye or two or five. But yes, it, it was beautiful to watch. And I think they, as always, every single year, they do our country incredibly proud. Now, on Monday, we had some wonderful news or celebrations because it was King Charles' 74th birthday. And for a birthday present to himself, as you do, because come on, we all do it, he has made himself the Ranger of Great Windsor Park, a position that was held by his father previously. And we had this phenomenal photograph released. It really is a beautiful portrait. I love everything about this and it's just another one for the history books, isn't it? Now for another birthday surprise, King Charles has now made his brother, Prince Edward, and his sister, Princess Anne, the Princess Royal, councillors of state, where they can now, in his absence, they can basically appear on behalf of the king. They can carry out royal duties on behalf of them, if God forbid, but you know, if he's taken ill or if he's maybe on other engagements and he is unable to attend, they can step in. Now it's been reported that Prince Andrew and Prince Harry were going to have this removed. Uh, he hasn't done that. Maybe that's something he might do at a later point. This was one of the last things, I think the last thing that he had in connection where he could have stood in for his father. But let's think about it realistically. There's no way you could have Andrew with what he's been called up in or Prince Harry who is about to release a memoir which is going to try and derail his father's coronation next year I'm sure that's why he's probably delayed it um you know it's just he's got such an awful attitude towards his father now I think he's handled it in a way where he's just added on two other people which are obviously going to take priority if he does need anyone to stand in for him rather than giving in to the it would be their fan base, wouldn't it? That would go absolutely mad. Harry's being cruelly treated yet again. No, he, he quit, he, he quit. You, you do remember, they quit Mexit. They didn't even sign a, a divorce deal. They didn't even tell the family that they were leaving. Now, speaking of the youngest son, formerly known as Prince Harry, now known as H or the child overseas, he has obviously, we knew something would pop up, right? Come on, we, we, we predicted it. But basically, Harry has done an appearance for Veterans Day with the USA. And then he also made an appearance as well, making sure his name was in the newspapers for Remembrance Sunday in the UK. Firstly, Archwell released a photograph of Harry and Meghan, a black and white photograph, which was actually taken at the Invictus Games in April. I'm sorry, but there was so many photographs that they could have chosen where it's about actually honouring other people and they choose the photograph of them. This is a typical Meghan move, isn't it? A narcissistic move. Here's a photograph of us showing our service and duty. It's never about anyone else. Now, Harry, as I said, he has popped up in, of all places, Honolulu in Hawaii alone. Maybe there is some truth to those rumours that all is not well in the loved up land of Montecito. But Harry has made an appearance at Pearl Harbor. Yes, he was there visiting the USS Arizona Memorial on Veterans Day, dressed in a suit and for once not wearing his medals. Every time we've seen Harry when it's to do with US military, he appeared with his medals for Stand Up For Heroes and then he wore his medals when Meghan wore that very, very OTT red dress at the Valor Awards. And then obviously 
The most offensive thing that I think they've done was parading around with a fashion photographer in the LA cemetery. But Harry was there, he looked quite smart. Let's be honest, Harry is there for a reason. He's not there because he decided he just woke up on Veterans Day and thought, I'll get on a plane to Hawaii. At the end of the day, he could go somewhere local, he could pay his respects. There's lots of things that he could have done nearby where he lives. So it makes me think it's something to do with the documentary, no doubt Netflix crew. Although there were no official photographs released and it was just photographs taken as you can tell by here um, by members of the public but it's just all too convenient isn't it that just they just happen to release it and sell it to the newspapers he's in a suit as well so it's not like he's just gone incognito he's decided that he's just having a break and he's jumped on a plane to Hawaii for a little bit of sun sea and I'd say relaxation but he doesn't have a job so he can't really need relaxation from doing well what is it they do? Now, I said that Harry looks a little bit sad here and I honestly believe he does. I think he's missing his old life. I do think that Harry genuinely did care about the military. There's, yes, he's made lots of bad decisions. He's, you know, the uniform, the disrespect he showed to the Marines with that concert and deal, choosing to take his wife to the Lion King premiere. I believe that Harry has made a lot of mistakes, but I do, however, believe that he did genuinely love and care for the military at one point in his life. I think he is so twisted up now that he's lost. But before I start getting those twangs of, I actually feel really sorry for him, it's quite clearly obvious he's been led down the garden path. Whilst he complains of being in his brother's shadow, he's never been more in someone's shadow as he has been since he took Meghan as his wife. But at the end of the day, it was Harry that chose to abuse his family in the way that he has done on multiple occasions and taken a paycheck. And I just know that how much pain and hurt he poured onto his 95, 96 year old grandmother when she was dealing with the grief of losing Prince Philip. The fact that he had the chance to go see her three days before she died, she asked to see him. He was in the UK and he refused. So that's when any of those little moments of where I think, oh, I feel a little bit sorry for him, they suddenly go, I don't know, there's something obviously going on with him. As I said, perhaps the, the, the rumours are true that they are beginning to live separate lives and Harry feels very isolated and trapped. He sold everything to become a cheap D-list celebrity and it's sad. It's sad that someone could have had a loving family and have every opportunity given in their life and then just throw it all back in everyone's faces. There's so many people out there that genuinely struggle, which brings me to my next story. And this one pushed my buttons, I'll be honest with you. Harry, to get into the newspapers for Remembrance Sunday, he did an open letter, which naturally was given to the media to be released on Remembrance Sunday. If you actually look at the date of the letter here, that was Sunday. He sent it to Scotty's Little Soldiers. The charity is for bereaved children who have lost their parents whilst being in services um, of the armed forces in the UK. And, you know, these children, I watched them. I watched, there's actually a little bit of footage here that I recorded. It is felt by 16-year-old Erin Nichols. Most people, when they think of the wars, they think of um, World War One and World War Two, and and older people who were affected but it's actually I was around 12 weeks old when my dad was killed and it actually affects young people a lot. Erin marched with bereavement charity Scotty's Little Soldiers. Today Prince Harry wrote to them saluting their work. These children marched and were there at the cenotaph. They were there to honour their mums or their dads or whoever it was, their loved ones, that some of them had actually, they lost when they were babies and they'd never got to meet. Some of them lost them when they were a lot older. These children, the courage that they have, the bravery that they show to be there to just honour the memory of their parents. But Harry has done a letter and in this letter, it's just typical doom and gloom. And I think Megan wrote it because, well, I won't read a lot of it to you, but you can see here all those yellow markers, me, I, me, I, I. But Harry somehow has to make it about him and to be honest with you rather than just doing a nice letter saying about your parents would be looking down on you you know proudly watching from above and just something nice just to give the children a boost or something no harry somehow has made it into a plug for his upcoming memoirs because he he talks about how he too has lost a parent that he shares a bond with these children these children that who've lost a parent 
through serving in the armed forces. Obviously, yes, he did lose Diana when he was young, but he talks about having a bond with these children. One, you're a 37, 38, I lose track, year old man, still acts like he's 15. These children lost parents under very different circumstances. And Harry did have a bond with another child, a child that lost his mother on the exact same day in the exact same way, that experienced every single emotion that Harry did. And what has he done to his brother? He has um, basically pretended that he doesn't exist or um, or pooped all over him, shall we say. I'll keep that a little bit politer. But yeah, Harry has done nothing but attack his brother. And he now seems to think that, like Meghan, he's an only child. I know firsthand the pain and grief that comes with loss. One of the ways I've learned to cope has been through community and talking about my grief. You're not alone. Nor were you, Harry, nor were you. Your family helped you, your friends helped you. All of these people that have helped Harry his entire life, the outpouring of love and support that he had. Can you imagine anyone else having the amount of support that Harry did? But he's learned to cope through community and talking about his grief. He hasn't stopped talking about his grief. He talks more about his grief in the last four years, well, since he's met Meghan than what he had done ever before. It's now kind of creepy to still be talking about the level of grief and sorrow and pain that he goes through now, being a grown man and a father of two children himself. It's a case of uh, the therapy clearly did not work. He's not exactly the best person that you want to be giving advice to these children that don't worry kids, you know, you might be seven and eight now, but you can still be lost in this wallowing grief and self-pity when you get to my age. Let's be honest, Harry seems to cope pretty well by selling every single memory and moment that he can remember of his mother to anyone that's waving a checkbook around. And now this is not me undermining at all what Harry went through. He was young, so was his brother, but there are thousands of children all around the world every day that lose their parents and they cope with it and they learn to grieve and to move on with it. It's never going to go away. You're always going to miss your parents. I miss my dad terribly now. But at the end of the day, Harry is still churning up his mother's memories for a paycheck to drum up interest in him and his wife and whatever it is that they're up to these days, which just seems to be collecting awards. Harry clearly has no scruples left when you think of the fact that he signed up to Netflix, the Netflix which is running The Crown. The latest season of The Crown has come out. No, I don't watch it. I don't want to watch it. I don't want to give them the clicks, to be honest with you. I think the fact that they are using real people that are alive and turning the stories into something more nefarious is cruel. I hate the fact that Prince William had to beg them to not do the funeral footage of the two boys walking behind the coffin, to please not do the Bashir interview. And they ignored that and they have done it and they have released it. And some people are stupid where they believe that everything the Crown says is true. You know, it doesn't matter if they put a caption on the beginning of it. You're either gonna think that Coronation Street in EastEnders is real or you're not. There's always gonna be that small number of people how cruel to do that, to live in people that are still alive now, to, to do that to William and to Harry. But the difference is William actually pleaded with them not to do it. And Harry kept his mouth shut, didn't he? They're paying his bills. And that to me, he's got no scruples left. He sold his soul to Netflix. Let's be honest, in years to come, I mean, how is Harry ever going to turn around and say that he is going to be defending his mother's legacy and her memories, that he doesn't want people selling his mother's memory down, down the river, probably his ex-wife at some point? How is he ever going to be able to stand on that leg ever again? He can't, can he? To sign up to Netflix, who have completely degraded his mother with the Diana musical as well, and then to keep his mouth shut when it comes to the crown, it just shows, as I said, he there's there's nothing of the old Harry that's there anymore. But I do believe that Harry is genuinely sad because he's living a soulless existence, which revolves around publicity stunts, paparazzi shots, tell-all interviews, and of course, collecting awards for just being them because there's no other reason why they should be getting awards i mean to get an environmental award because you've chosen to have two children now that was a laugh then you got the naacp awards which they had just partnered with conveniently and it was all to do with links to do with sunshine Sachs. and that award was given for their distinguished work in public service distinguished work i 
I'm sorry, I'm struggling to find out what they've done that is distinguished. And obviously they've got this new award coming, the Ripple of Hope Award, where another person that's actually getting the award is President Zelensky of Ukraine, who is leading his countrymen and women through war. Yet here we are, Harry and Meghan are also getting the same award for their outstanding humanitarianism work. Because they've turned up somewhere for a photo opportunity? because they've made a donation at some point, an undisclosed sum. I mean, let's be honest, Archwell, their foundation, is just a public relations company now for them. Everything they promote is about them. Megan's podcast, it's about her. It's not to do with her guests. She can dress it up how she wants, but it's all about them. It is one big narcissistic endeavour, and here they are getting awards for it. Now, I'm not the only person, obviously there's lots of us that are perplexed by it, but funnily enough, there is an actual member of the Kennedy family that is also questioning why are they getting this award. RFK Jr. has come out and turned around and said, despite being Kerry Kennedy's brother, who is the woman that's in charge of handing out these awards and designating who gets them doesn't understand why the ripple of hope award is going to them next month what is it exactly that you know they've done to deserve it it does seem to be that everything that they get there is a tie to it we worked out before in previous videos i said to you sunshine sacks well in this case funnily enough kerry kennedy's youngest sister Rory Kennedy, she happens to be besties, went to university with and started up a production film company with the creator of Harry and Meghan's Netflix documentary. Yes, Liz Garbus, who is the one that is directing and behind the Netflix love story, which we are all going to be treated to at some point, Lord help us. And she is besties with Rory Kennedy and they both set up the Moxie Firecracker Film Production Company. I mean, what are the chances? What are the coincidences? Do we think that Harry and Meghan have been given this prestigious award due to their outstanding dedication and service to humanitarian efforts? The fact that they are globally spending the rest of their lives dedicating it to service and to duty and to serving others? Or do we think that Liz Garbus, out of desperation to appease the Netflix paymasters, said, Rory, do me a favour. <laughs> I know which one I'm going to bet on. So that's it for me on this one, guys. And I will be back with you very soon because we've got a podcast to talk about. See you later. Bye. If you would like to buy me a coffee, please go to my about page and click the link. Love, Taz.